What's up, everybody? Welcome to Runway Takes, and this is a new series I started, which is where I basically go over a lot of the runways, campaigns, and other fashion houses. And it's basically where I give my feelings slash hot takes about, you know, a lot of the current things going on in the fashion world. And in today's video, we will be going over Balmain's Fall Winter 2024 collection and a lot of the recent controversy. And it is brought to you by designer Oliver Rostein. So after four years, Rostein recently popped out with a Balmain Fall Winter 2024 collection. And the show was all about luxury featuring crystal top coats with computer generated faces, playful lip theme accessories, and vibrant outfits paying tribute to Congo Sapels. Collaborations with artists brought unique prints and turned accessories into cool items. Also featured exciting collaborations such as print collaborations with Pra-based Prince Jassy, where images were reproduced on garments, including a standout triptych look in Look 38. Another collaboration with Cameroonian Ibn Joya turned suitcase and tiny hard cases into adorable luggage. The tailored section had precise and eye-catching pieces. Gold details, face sculptures, and Naomi Campbell's unique belt added a touch of opulence. So now we're going to talk about some of the previous incident Balmain has faced with, you know, some of the copying allegations. The creative director of Balmain said, and I quote, this is coming from an interview from the WWD. And what is the WWD? Basically, a fashion journal? Fashion news journal. Sorry. And I quote, it's about quality. It's about timelessness. And it's about bringing back to Balmain's history. In 1945, the house of Pierre Balmain was built by someone that had the strength to believe in style and believe in a new French style. So again, some of the brands WWD mentions in its article are some smaller brands. They said Walmart has copied or pulled a lot of inspo quotes from, and some of them are SA Formal and some Team and Amazon brands. The mentioned fashion brands include Thierry Mugler, Chanel by Carol Lagerfeld, Moschino by Jeremy Scott, and various small brands available on platforms. Like I previously said, Amazon and SA Formal and whatnot. The focus is on the history of Balmain. Thierry Mugler, Carol Lagerfeld, Chanel, and Moschino. Mustang, while not replicating designs exactly as before, now combines and creates compilations, making it challenging for experts to trace the exact origin of any of his design. Pierre Balmain is renowned for iconic specific looks, Pierre Mugler for exquisite dresses inspired by tuxedos, Carl Lagerfeld Chanel for elegant black dresses and jackets, and Valentino and Moschino for their distinctive bows. Bustain believes that he inherited, and I quote, inherited all of these elements from these designers and he also mentioned that he started using a lot of old designs from old fashion catalogs and patterns from the 1980s to the 1990s to pull a lot of inspiration from. So now we're going to go into some of the current allegations as of 2024. And a lot of this is based on Balmain's Fall Winter 2024 collection, recently released, I think around two weeks ago at the date of this video. So, Sarah Diouf founder of African fashion brand Tungoro, recently expressed disappointment with Balmain, accusing them of copying Tungoro's signature jewelry piece Cairo, inspired by the Wudabi tribe. And what I'm referring to are the... I don't want to say anything like... Nah, I just need a good example. Um, I know you've seen them probably. It's like the face jewelry that lines in the middle of their face, and it's gold. That you've seen going around which is pretty cool in my opinion but apparently it's not original introduced in 2019 the piece gained a lot of popularity and traction the piece gained popularity after being worn by naomi campbell and alicia keys and they also posted a picture on twitter that i'll show you here the fall winter men's 2024 collection unveiled a strikingly similar face jewelry, sparking the debate of cultural appropriation these posts addresses a lot of the challenges faced by african brands and questions Western brands' acknowledgement of Africa's creativity. The girls' moments in Beyonce's spirit video 
contribute to the cultural narrative. The incident calls for addressing cultural appropriation in the fashion industry and prompting collaborations with African designers for more inclusive and respectful creative environments. As the conversation of cultural appropriation grows, fashion brands must engage in meaningful dialogue and implement policies for diverse and fair representation. Angora's accusations against Bowman prompt reflection on industry practices for a more equitable future emphasizing that the truth of innovation lies in embracing diverse cultural perspectives. And honestly, you know, I thought this was a, the end of the story. Okay, Bowman copied, you know, a lesser fashion brand Tengoro, but it turns out it's not what you think. I did a little bit more research and it turns out Tengoro wasn't the originators of the Cairo piece. Kenyan jeweler Teresa Chiello faced the allegations of plagiarism as Tengoro accused Bowman of copying their signature jewelry piece. Photographer Sherry Margaret Ngiji disputed Tungoro's claim crediting Gyalo as the original creator of the so-called Cairo piece. Gyalo debuted these pieces in February of 2019, months prior to Tungoro's release, which was in May, mind you. Gyalo responded to the controversy expressing irony, witnessing her work being stolen by one brand and then being appropriated by another. It's just kind of crazy, it's like, you know, that Spider-Man meme of who copied who. Of my thoughts on this. Um, I feel like Balmain could have, you know, created some initiatives, some positive initiatives that highlight, you know, where the work is coming from or who it's based off of that can positively impact a lot of these African designers slash artists. They could also take some more educational initiatives, so educating the audience of, you know, some of the cultural background from some of their pieces, which would also highlight, you know, some of the designers that inspired some of their looks and whatnot. And I feel like that would be very helpful and also shine some light on, you know, some of the creativity of African artists and designers that's currently going on. Another thing is they should definitely give some transparency slash credit. Bowman could obviously open up with, you know, hey, this is where we saw this first design from initially, whether it be through show notes or, you know, a quick introduction, I'd say. Now we're gonna talk about my final thoughts. It's definitely easier for a lot of these big high fashion brands and how this pull and reach down um, a lot of these smaller designers, simply because of, you know, smaller designers lack name and a lot more credibility. And it's really a game of, you know, who did it first, but who did it louder, I'd say, but louder in the sense that who has more name or who has more eyes that can look at it and be like, oh yeah, no, no, well, man did it first, not, you know, oh, not Kialo, or even Tungoro, you know, you know, it's not there. In essence, the key lies in respectful and collaborative practices that acknowledge the origin of inspiration for any pieces that have been showcased to promote understanding and generally contribute positively to the cultural landscape. Um, another thing I'd like to add is I'm going to possibly just do this for, you know, not necessarily money, but um, a lot of profit driven motives. As we know, copying is really for commercial reasons and the genuine appreciation for any copied pieces are really undermining just solely based on, you know, profit. And it generally leads to a lot of ethically questionable actions. Um, let me know how you feel about today's video, any, you know, missing information I left out, or generally how you feel about, you know, a lot of the cultural appropriation going on.